uh, Modern Workplace Specialist. We've got Dr. Uh, Ken Rucci uh, presenting uh, today's topic. So I will hand it over to him. And if there are any questions, you feel free to uh, either unmute yourself or uh, type it into the uh, the chat window. I will uh, I'll be watching over the chat window and uh, we'll um, we'll raise the questions to Ken. So thanks. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for thank you for joining. As Tony mentioned, my name is uh, Ken Rucci. I am a security and compliance team uh, with Microsoft, and uh, my role uh, is to to help our customers understand our cybersecurity solutions uh, and uh, just be a resource. So. I'm looking forward to spending the, the next hour or so talking about Microsoft Defender. And what I wanted to do first, uh, before we uh, get too far into it, is really to spend a, uh, a moment kind of maybe clearing up some, some naming changes. Uh, Microsoft seems to do that on a regular basis. So we're talking about Microsoft Defender for Office 365 today. Uh, previously known as uh, Office 365 Advanced Threat Protection. And what Microsoft has done is uh, move towards the Defender uh, brand. So any of the products that we had previously called Advanced Threat Protection have been renamed. Uh, so uh, you may hear uh, we refer to Microsoft Defender Advanced Threat Protection, which is now known as Microsoft Defender uh, for Endpoint. So uh, I just wanted to just... Uh, just spend a second on this slide just to, to go through uh, any of that. If anybody has any questions, uh, you know, please uh, type it in the chat or or unmute yourself. Happy to, to clear up any names uh, you know, or that uh, may still be a little bit confusing. So when we talk about Office 365, one of the things that uh, you know Microsoft has done and, and you know we spend a lot of time talking about, is just really the way things have changed from a cybersecurity standpoint. You know, it, it's like a game of chess these days. We'll uh, figure out a way to block something and then the attackers will come up with a new way to do it. And a lot of our customers are getting overwhelmed with, uh, you know, putting multiple solutions into uh, their stack, uh, you know, something to protect spam, something else to look for uh, anomalies or protect identities. So Microsoft has consolidated and created this integrated security platform, which Defender for Office 365 uh, is part of. And when we, we start to think about how this helps us and makes us more effective, one of the things we have to you know, do is just think about the breadth of, of where we are from a cyber standpoint. Uh, credential threat is, 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 is probably the number one threat that we face today. Uh, you know, with phishing attacks and just ways that uh, attackers can get inside the organization and bypass all of the protections that you have already set up. The other thing is that um, I talked about earlier is just the fact that we have multiple products in our customer environment. Uh, the slide talks about 35 different vendors. Uh, you know, we have different solutions and the, the issue or the problem is, is that these are great products. They're doing a good job, but we're not sharing that signal uh, across the stack. And we need to be able to do that to be more effective in our uh, protection and increase our security posture. So one of the things that Microsoft has uh, that makes us a little bit unique as opposed to some of the other vendors is we own that stack, right? We own basically from the operating system, up through Office 365. So this protection is built in. It's not another product that we have to install an agent on. It's not another monitoring console that, that we have to look at. And all of this is built into uh, the Microsoft Cloud environment. So we're able to leverage all of that telemetry that, that we receive and automate it. And automate, automation is a big piece for our customers because it gives them a way to respond a lot faster. You know, these security alerts get overwhelming. Uh, and, you know, how do you triage what alerts you need to pay attention to? So by, a, by adding another layer of automation to that, it makes it easier and quicker for us to respond. So when I talk about it being built into the stack, we're able to be able to provide that 
um, inter- integration. So we don't have to have a, an agent. We don't have to install any additional software. There's nothing that needs to be uh, updated on a regular basis. It's all just part of the stack. And then we add that telemetry. And, and what we talk about is our security graph. So this information that Microsoft receives comes across everything. It comes across our web platforms. We have over 200 web services. The authentications that we receive from Azure Active Directory, Bing searches, and also just our physical security team that works out of Redmond to work with law enforcement and bot takedowns that you may have read about in the information. So we get all this information and we, we, we incorporate that into our products. So one of the things that um, from the Microsoft perspective in, in relation to Office 365 Def- Defender uh, is that we provide this protection really across what you know we call the you know the kill chain. So our philosophy is if if we can prevent more from getting in, then that makes our in- internal infrastructure more secure. But we also need to be able to just recognize that that things are going to get in, we're not going to be able to block everything. So we have to have a way to detect, be proactive, look for uh, events within our environment, and then help educate our internal users so that they're not as likely to click on things or provide remediation. If someone uh, does click on something, how can we follow up with some additional training? And then overall, what does our environment look like? A lot of our customers, you know, come uh, and we work with state and local government customers all the time. So one of the common things is the customers say, well, this is great. There's so many pieces to this. How, where do I start? Well, we have some tools that are built into our security stack that can help you uh, make your security posture more secure. This is based on best practices, security configurations, what Microsoft has done, information that we receive uh, from other customers. So all of this is part of our secure enterprise uh, stack. So this is how Microsoft approaches it, right? We just don't have an antivirus. We don't just have an anti-spam solution. All of this information, as I mentioned, is integrated. So we have protection at the edge. So we'll do, you know, the, the, the normal things where we'll block known bad sites, we'll filter out, um, you know, known spam addresses, look for malware based on signatures. All of that stuff is part of Exchange Online Protection, which is our uh, email solution that runs in Office 365. But then as we go down the stack, we'll start to add some more information uh, you know, like we'll get signaling from Azure Active Directory. Is is this account known to be bad? Have we seen other telemetry here that will give us some indication that, that this might be, uh, you know, something that we made to take some action on? Is this is this sender trying to impersonate a known user? Uh, are they trying to, you know, to impersonate the domain? So all of this is built into Office 365 uh, Defender. And then we'll start to look at the content itself. And, and this is where we can get into some of the things that uh, the vendor for Office 365 provides. Like we can detonate packages, uh, attachments that come in to look to see, do they contain malware? Are they trying to do something malicious? Uh, look at the URLs. We can do something called safe attachments. And then afterwards, if we do detect something that happens, we can do things to go back and either provide you know, an investigation or we have something called ZAP, which is zero hour auto purge. So if post delivery, we determine something uh, is malicious, we can go back and pull that out of the uh, user's inboxes. And then we can also provide this advanced la- level of uh, intelligence to look at campaigns and then even extend that protection out to our office clients. So that includes OneDrive for Business, SharePoint, Office 365, uh, the clients like Word, Excel, PowerPoint. So although email is probably the biggest vector for for things getting in, 
we want to be able to extend that across the stack. And that's one of the other unique things from a Microsoft perspective is uh, you know, we can extend that protection past uh, email. <clears throat> so because we're sitting on top of this security graph, uh, we can look at things like mail patterns. So we can use some uh, AI in the background to be able to say, what are some normal patterns for some of this email? Is this out of the ordinary? Do we see a bigger volume of email around this? So this is all information uh, that we can use uh, that you don't have to turn it on. It's just part of the product. So if it looks, so we do see uh, some kind of email compromise or there's a, an account takeover from some exposed credentials, all of this information is there and we can take action on it as part of our pr product. So the other thing that I mentioned, and this is how easy it is to turn on, is just extending that protection outside of email. So this is just a, uh, an on or off switch. Uh, do we want to be able to detonate packages in SharePoint, OneDrive for Business, and Teams? So this way, if someone uh, does go and bring a file in outside of email, we know that people are still using USB drives, they're emailing documents to themselves. I mean, they'll, they'll find a way. Uh, so if they do go share a malicious document, then we can actually treat that, doc that document just to, as if it was an email attachment and go ahead and detonate it. So this is, you know, how we can just extend this by just, it's just a, it's just a check mark. Um, so there's nothing that you have to enable there from a client. And then we get into this really unique view from what a new feature, what we call uh, the campaign views. So because we're looking at all of this email traffic that that happens and traverses through our uh, tenant, we can look at it and start to group things together. And we can say this is you know, this seems to be uh, you know a pattern or a cluster of of malware that's being uh, targeted against a particular domain or maybe a user. So we can now automatically create these campaigns and it gives you from a security ops uh, perspective, the ability to group them together to look to see, can you get anything, uh, any relevant information out of it? But more importantly, you can see what happened, right? You can see here on the slide, we can see that, you know, safe links blocked this. So this was, you know, this was someone trying to get in. We provide some graphical views. And if we have some time at the end, I actually have a, a live environment that, that we can log in that I can show you this uh, in a, a little bit more detail. But this is what Microsoft is doing with uh, making it easier to get some deeper insight into what's happening inside of your environment. We also provide alerts. And this is a, a, a normal function, but... One of the things that, that we can do is we can add in this concept of, a, of what we call a priority account. And a priority account identifies some users as VIPs or people that would be likely victims of a spear phishing attack. So by, ta by tagging an account as a priority account, we can start to monitor that. And we can see the activity specific to that account if it, if it was, uh, you know, uh, a target or if it gets an unusual amount of email that, you know, maybe a victim of a, a phishing attempt, all this information is provided and we can just bubble this up uh, right into the console. And this is an example of an alert that is targeted towards a, a priority account, all right? So we can see that you know, this is, again, this post delivery information or intelligence that we can do. Uh, we can see that, you know, a URL was weaponized after delivery. And that's a common tactic, right? Because the, you know, the, the bad guys know that we're, we're looking at everything that comes in through an inbox. Uh, so they'll, you know, let it sit in the user's inbox for a while, a couple of days, and then they'll go ahead and, and change the URL on the back end. Um, and this is where that zap uh, would come in. This is that post delivery it would come in. And uh, once we detect that it is now malicious, we'll go ahead and, and, and move it back, move it to quarantine or spam or uh, whatever your, your policy dictates. 
So now, now we can get into where we can look at a little bit more of this information. And we talked about prioritizing the accounts as uh, uh, tagging them as as priority, so we can get an extra deeper view on uh, all of those accounts. But we we can see here in the Explorer, uh, and this is basically the dashboard for Defender for Office 365. Is I can go and filter and look to see. Uh, you know, are what's happening with my priority accounts? Are there targeted users uh, that you know are receiving an unusual amount of activity? Uh, we can filter and create our own custom queries based on that. And then also, we have the ability to have users submit maybe what we consider maybe a, a false negative uh, or a false positive, and we can add that into right into the. Outlook toolbar so they can submit this right to our organization. Uh, oh, and then we also have the ability for uh, the administrators to submit directly to Microsoft, uh, you know, a particular message uh, or an attachment that, uh, you know, is should be considered malicious. So this submission panel is new functionality that's been uh, added into Office 365. And this is all based on uh, feedback that we've received from customers that they want to have a, more control over what happens inside of their environment. It should be an easier way uh, to get additional things into uh, Microsoft to take a look at. So this is a little bit more detail into that Explorer. And because we store all this information up in the cloud, you have the ability to do some some very specific or customized queries into uh, what's happening from uh, an email perspective. We can look at things uh, by recipient, by domain, uh, for example, uh, if you want to see what did uh, Office SafeLinks uh, detect, what was the technology that uh, you know to flag this. All of this can can be set uh, and queried, and you can go ahead and and save these queries uh, as well. And this is what some of this looks like, and, and we get some pretty detailed information uh, on, on each of these emails. If, by looking at this uh, slide here, you can see you know, basically what the analysis was from the Microsoft side, uh, where it came from, is it part of a, a campaign, what did we flag it, did it pass DMARC or SPF? Uh, you know, uh, these are all things that can be uh, leveraged in, in rendering that verdict, whether the, the email is uh, malicious or not. So this is, this is available as part of that threat uh, explorer that you can, you can look at inside of the dashboard. And then once we are looking at some of this information, you can actually start to take action on these emails. And this is something that we can layer on top of Office 365, uh, the Defender piece. So you can go and query and do your investigation. Maybe you want to do a little proactive hunting, looking for something uh, you know that, that happened. Maybe uh, it's not considered malicious, but it's something that we want to look at. So by doing the queries and threat, and I can show you this if, if we have time, um, I can actually group emails together. I can go ahead and do a soft or a hard delete uh, or move them to the user's inbox if I uh, determine that. But then I can also just kick off an automated investigation. So that automation, automation that I talked about uh, in the beginning is based on playbooks that Microsoft has established or put together but then it also gives you the ability to kick off an investigation as well. And that investigation can see, did anybody else get this email? Did anybody else click on it? You know, so we can get some very deep uh, insights into what's happening as part of that email. And this is a little bit more uh, view into uh, what that automation looks like, right? We can see the, you know, what investigations were uh, kicked off in our environment, who the users were, what the result of these investigations were. And you do have some flexibility 
with these automated investigations and we can have them just automatically remediate or in some cases a lot of our customers want to have some more control over what happens so we can say before any action is taken as part of this investigation uh, i want to approve it so you can see here on this slide we're looking at you know some automatically remediated investigations and some that are that are pending action right so there's different ways that we can look at it and then if we want to see from a graphical perspective what happened from the investigation this is what we uh, we call the the investigation graph and it gives you the ability to see what triggered the investigation how many emails were involved how many users were involved in this investigation and then you know what threats did we find uh, and give you the remediations that were uh, that were triggered as, as part of this in investigation. So this this automatic investigation uh, or automated investigation response is part of Office 365, but it's also included, and we're adding more and more automation into our stack. Is it's part of the Defender for Endpoint product as well, and we're starting to make uh, deeper integrations between the two products. So. If Microsoft Defender for Endpoint detects something, uh, it can actually trigger an investigation on the Office 365 side to see were there any other emails. And so that that platform integration that we have is really starting to uh, get a lot of interest from customers because they they just want to see an easier way uh, to investigate uh, their security posture. So this is just a, another example of that zero hour purge where uh, you know, we, we identified an email uh, after the fact. We went ahead and just pulled it out of the inbox uh, and that's automatic. That happens uh, based on information that we receive from uh, the intelligence uh, graph that all of this sits on. And then the other piece that we have, and, and this is uh, you know, fairly new, and we've just added another another feature to it uh, is the attack simulator. So, what we can do is give you the ability to essentially attack yourself. You can create uh, different campaigns that can simulate a uh, credential harvesting email or a phishing email, uh, and you can target different departments. Maybe I want to test out the you know, finance department this week. And you can add your own logos and customize, uh, you know, the the links, and go ahead and run that. So we'll be able to uh, see which users are susceptible to those type of attacks. Uh, but then also, we've added the ability to provide some training. So uh, now we can say, okay, here are the people that, uh, you know, were, uh, you know, clicked on this link as part of that campaign. Here's some of the training that now that we recommend. So all of this information uh, is part of Microsoft Defender for Office 365. So now you have a complete, you know, from not only testing out, but providing uh, additional end user awareness uh, that may be needed. And this is what it, uh, you know, what it looks like, right? You've received the email, you can customize uh, what uh, you, what the user sees or what uh, additional content they we would recommend for them afterwards and this and we do provide you know some insight into uh, what the result were was uh, you know how much how many people clicked on it uh, what we recommended and each one of the, uh, each one of these campaigns can be set up uh, to have their own individual metrics uh, and insight available So what we've also done is, as part of the integration with Outlook, um, is we've, we've changed the way that we've done some of the, what we call the, the safe links uh, rewriting. Uh, you know, because what happens is uh, each URL that's inside of the email, we don't actually, uh, we don't click on the original email. We'll send the URL to the safe link service and then we'll do it at the time of click uh, decision. 
whether we want to send the user to the uh, link or do we want to block it. And it's important to understand that we do that at the time of click uh, because we know, as I mentioned before, that uh, you know they could change the payload on the end. Uh, and you know what we at the time of delivery, this this may be different than what happens at the time of click. So with that safe link, rewritten URL. We don't even really show the user, but we do show them that it's being protected. So where it's where you see on the slide where it says original URL, that means that we're this is protected by uh, the SafeLink service. And when you go ahead and click on it, we'll just do you know a split second check of that and go ahead and redirect the user uh, if we determine that it's safe. The other thing is we provide that uh, user protection. Uh, against impersonation and also that insight into the email traffic. So on the slide here, you see, you know, that we're calling out the fact that this user doesn't normally get email from this person, that this could possibly be uh, some kind of fish or impersonation that's going on. So it just raises awareness for the users to, to look at before they, before they click on the slides. So here's the here is the security posture piece that we had talked about. Um, so what we've done in part of Defender for Office 365 is uh, we've added in to the interface some of the tools that we previously had uh, that were some configuration analyzers uh, and and best practice uh, you know scanners, and now this is all part of the security analyzer that's available in the admin console. And what we can do is just run this and then based on your configurations and uh, what Microsoft recommends, we can tell you where you are and make some additional recommendations. Uh, so if you see here, we're looking at the settings for anti-spam and you know, we're recommending that you, know, you change your setting to move it to junk mail and even provide a link to how to enable that. So this is, again, this is trying to uh, enable our customers to be more secure without having to go to you know, multiple places uh, to make changes to their environment. And again, we, we talked about um, setting the policies uh, this is, you know, there's, we have ways now that um, we can, instead of having to set all the individual settings as part of the policy configuration, uh, we can, we have a way to, to kind of group those together based on our recommendations and best practices. And here's some of the other uh, screenshots on, on how to change some of this uh, information based on uh, what we come up with from the analyzer. So as, as the other part of what I wanted to talk about today um, is what we call conditional access. And from Microsoft's perspective, we view the identity as the new security perimeter, right? There's the, the, the way that we IT used to work uh, is you know, someone would come in in the morning, do all their work on a PC, uh, and then go home. We didn't live in this world where, uh, you know, especially with COVID, people were working from home. They were connecting to different applications, uh, you know, using multiple identities. So it was really hard to to be able to group this together to to see this information. So what Microsoft has done is we've consolidated and we view the identity as that control plane and, and that control plane is managed through Azure Active Directory. So if we can centralize all of that, all of those authentication and accesses and, and give us the ability to look deep into all of that information, like the logins and where the person's going and what time do they log in, then we can use that uh, to make some security decisions. And we actually call that Azure um, Active Directory conditional access. So conditional access is, is really the uh, ability to create 
simple or very complex rules on uh, whether we're going to grant access to a user. So we can do it through a, a couple of different ways. Uh, we can use that uh, signal and information from the device. So we can say, who is the user? What device are they logging into? Where do they want to go? And what applications are they using? Um, and, and this enables us to be more uh, secure because I can say, you know, I, I don't mind if Ken logs in um, if he's not at work or on our network, but I don't want him downloading anything or I want to restrict him to say a browser or he can only use the Microsoft application. You can't do it from a mobile phone. So we have the ability to make all of these uh, decisions and pull in all this information at the time of the request. And then the other thing that we can do is pull in what we call the session risk. And this is something that we can do because we have all of that user information. Because we're looking at that user and we're seeing where did they log in? What type of device do they do? And we can we can create what we call um, a health, a user health or risk. And we can say, you know, Ken's logged in here, but then five minutes ago, he was just trying to log in from Hong Kong. Uh, that's an impossible travel situation. So we're going to set his risk to high. And maybe when we say his risk is high, we're going to require him to have MFA. And this is, you know, this makes it a lot easier for our customers to be more proactive, uh, especially if an identity has been compromised. I don't have to have someone going through the logs to determine if there's a problem. We can do this now as part of the uh, signaling that we get from the intelligent security graph. So we can apply this to all of the different apps. So this is not just Office 365 applications or Microsoft, but if you're using, uh, you know, SaaS apps like, uh, you know, draw, um, Box or Salesforce or ServiceNow or any of those other applications, we can uh, build these conditional access policies around that. So this is something a lot of customers are really interested in because uh, you know we can create multiple roles that they can that they can use. Uh, you know, there's there's really uh, you know a wide variety of ways this is, this can be uh, implemented. So that's conditional access. And this is just a kind of a quick view of how we can set these. Now you can pick the users, what controls do you want to grant to them? Uh, you know, you can, you make this a global wide uh, acceptance, ex, uh, you know, uh, other and include or exclude people. One of the things that we always recommend um, is to, you know, create some exclusion for a super user or what we call a, you know, a break glass user, uh, because if you say you require multi-factor authentication for everybody and something goes wrong, um, you, there's, you need to have a way to, to get in. So you create a super, you know, a cloud only user that doesn't sync with Azure Active Directory, you know, maybe keep the password separate or two people like the nuclear launch codes, two people have to do it. Um, but you know, provide that ability to, to get in if something, uh, happens. So also you can pick what apps you want to use. Here's that sign in risk that I had talked about. Uh, you know, if we set the sign in risk as high, here's what happens that we block. And again, you can see a, a, a wide variety of things that you, you can use as part of this multi-factor. We, if we're monitoring the actual device, is the device compliant? Uh, is it joined to Azure AD? Uh, so there's a lot of different things that that you can do or you can say it's got to be all of these things so you can get pretty uh, pretty extensive as far as how you build these rules so i know that was a lot of information uh, to cover and i and if it makes sense i can uh, just log in and kind of walk you through some of the things that i uh, talked about as as part of the presentation but uh, I'll pause here uh, and just check with Tony if there were any questions or is there any questions uh, that you wanted to bring up before uh, we moved on? Oh, there are no questions in the chat window, Ken. 
Okay. Okay, so what I'll do then uh, is I'll just go ahead and stop pausing here, stop sharing here, and I'll switch to the environment. And I can just walk you through kind of what some of this looks like, uh, if that's helpful. Okay. So what I have here is a, a you know a demo environment that uh, we have we have access to. So uh, just to give you a, a, an example of what some of this inf it looks like, here's a typical dashboard uh, where I can see what top playbooks have been run. Again, this is that security automation, uh, threat protection. I can see you know at a high level, you know this is the red light, green light type thing. How many emails did I block? Uh, here's the you know malware trend. Again, are we, are we seeing some more uh, uh, entries into our environment than normal? And and again, this is that additional uh, insight that we have because we have ability to look at that user traffic. And so all of this is this is here. But what I want to do is just go down to the Explorer, uh, and I showed you this uh, in the slide. But we can see here, uh, you know, the ability to look. This is, you know, from the second to the eighth, uh, and you know, the ability to see this visually is nice because I can see maybe, you know, here's a spike that happened over a couple of days, and this is all dynamic. So I can see, uh, you know, this was 222 antivirus. So we're pulling in information not just from the Office 360 or Defender for Office, but we're pulling in information from EOP, Exchange Online Protection. So this is just the antiviruses that had been picked up. Um, and this is all color coded. You can change this here. But this is the information I talked about before, right? So I can see uh, here's the email. This was moved to quarantine. Uh, do I wanna see what the top malware was here? You know, it looks like, oh man, I have 40 attempts of this uh, loader. Uh, malware. So I can see here, I can click on this. Here's all of the email that happened or happened that we received. Uh, you can see that it was blocked. We can get the technical details. And also if this was you know, targeted to a particular uh, group or are we seeing a spike? And I think this is pretty helpful because you can see this is worldwide, right? We see, and again, because we're pulling all this information from Microsoft, I can see what's happening from worldwide level. And then here's my level, I see nine. So this is you know, not targeted to me, but it gives you that uh, insight into that. Uh, you can see here is somebody being kind of hit hard. Uh, this is a demo environment, so everything goes to Emily, but she's been hit you know, 2000 times. Where's this email coming from? Uh, we can put this on a, on a map. This will come up in a second. And here's that campaign view that I had mentioned in the uh, presentation, All right? So I can see here, look, there's a, uh, this payment notice. So let's see this email uh, campaign. And I can see here, right? Here's the time. When did it start? How many people were impacted? Anybody click on this, right? And, and we have a 0.4% targeted rate, but here's the, the traffic of this. Right, here's the domains or this IPs that it came from. And this is a, a honeypot. Uh, and we don't really have a whole, don't want to have real malicious stuff going for a demo. Uh, but what happened to it? These are the IPs. Here's the attachment. Right, here's the URLs that were in there, if there were any in there. Uh, and then we can get, go back to that explorer because we have everything linked. Um, so if I want to explore that campaign, this will open up another window with all of that information that we looked at, right? So I can see here it was all blocked. So you can really get into this type of data analysis. And the other thing that I mentioned is if I wanted to just do a targeted, like maybe I want to look at these three, right? Now I can go and I can go and delete them from the users or I can go ahead and just kick off an investigation. But now you can take action on this. So from an operation standpoint, it gives you a, a, a pretty detailed view into 
what's happening inside of your environment and how do I want to uh, take any action. So that was a kind of quick view of the uh, Explorer. But let's go look at the other thing that I talked about, which was the automatic investigations. So here's one that just happened. Um, I can filter on these. You know, I can change the you know the start date. If let's you know move this back a little bit. No, let's just go with this one. So here's one that's pending action. This is a user suspected of being compromised. It's running, and I can see here it's pending action. So this is one that's not set up to auto remediate. So if I go ahead and open up this investigation. Here I can see what triggered this alert, how many emails were investigated as part of this. Again, and here we're saying, you know, this looks like a compromise. We're going to go ahead and delete the emails and enforce the password reset. So this information can come from multiple sources. So if there were a few alerts that uh, were involved in triggering this email, I could see that here. Here's all the emails. Now, if you take a look at this, this is where we're doing what's called heuristic clustering. So we're looking at all of the emails that maybe came from the same sender, but maybe different uh, you know, with a different subject or different different variations of all of this. So we're we're doing this automatically as part of this investigation. Did did the attacker just try and change a few words to try and get past our filter or something like? Uh, you know, making a little bit of modification. So we see here, right, that we, each one of these clusters, we determined that is fish. Here's the total number. We blocked you know, this number. Here's the user that was involved. If there were any machines. We actually log all of this information. And for our state and local government customers, this is uh, something that, that is important to them. So I can see exactly what happened as part of this. And you can see the duration of this uh, investigation. It goes pretty quick, right? We're looking at, uh, you know, cluster ID. That took seven seconds. Mail forwarding rules. We're checking to see if there's there one second. So if you start to look at the, the efficiency or the scale of what we can do from this automatic investigation standpoint, you can see how this can add a lot of value to your uh, security environment. Because if you had to hire... Uh, the analysts to be able to take this action. You wouldn't be able to do it as quickly. And, and a lot of our customers, uh, especially in, in these times, don't have unlimited budget to, to ramp out their security uh, staff. And then here's what happened, right? So these are all pending approval. So these are the things that, uh, you know, we determined that we need to do, right? Delete the emails from the inbox and then change the, you know, force the user to change the password. Again, this happens automatically. These are just part of the uh, the playbooks that are built into the tool. So there's a lot of information here that can happen. Um, I'll quickly wrap up because I know Tony said we wanted to leave some time at the end uh, here. Is just show you that the new feature. And one of the things that we're doing is we're actually consolidating all of our portals into one place. Uh, so we'll still have the the uh, individual portals, but because we're aggregating all this information into one place, we've uh, started creating this one single pane of glass to, to see all of our info. So if you have multiple security products running, we aggregate all of those together into uh, one place so you don't have to go from here to here to here to here. Uh, and this is an you know example of this. Uh, this environment has basically Office 365 in here, uh, but you can see here they have Cloud App Security, some other things. But this is the attack simulation training um, that I showed in the uh, slides. So here I can see an overview of uh, different type of simulations that I want to run. Again, we have Credential Harvest. We can simulate malware. Uh, into the uh, environment. If I want to go ahead and click on it, I can walk through 
Do I want to create a malicious link? Do I want to put an attachment in there? And you can walk through all of this different, uh, all these different things of who to target, create your own look and feel uh, for that attack, and then and then who do we want to who do we want to target? And then if we go back here, you can actually go and see the results of that uh, as far of, as far as who clicked on it uh, and different ways to set up each one of these uh, attacks. So I know that was a lot in uh, 49 minutes, so I will uh, end there. And, and, and if you have additional questions or if there's a, uh, you want to get a deeper dive into any of these uh, things that I talked about today, I'm happy to do that as part of the uh, account team. You can just work uh, with Tony, and I'd be happy to follow up. Thank, thanks, Ken. Appreciate that. That was, that was great. So uh, are there any questions from the uh, from the audience? Well, you can either type them or uh, or come off mute and ask your questions if you're if you'd like. Okay, it seems like there's no questions. Well, thank you for attending today, and uh, we'll have our uh, next uh, webinar um, in, in January. Thank you very much.